right, so I've got to make uh, um, I got to make four semi similar knives. This is uh, water t and some more of the water tower steel. Uh, it's for the same guy. So I cut them in four pieces. They're pretty thick. They're about a half inch thick, and about that's enough to make a good sized knife. I think I'm going to make stick tang knives or through tang, however you want to say it. Um, and uh, I'll try and film some of the process. I'm not going to get too detailed on it, but I got to start a fire here in a second. And uh, I'm just happy to have my belt grinder up and running. All right, so got the fire going. This is the prep fire. Uh, so what you do is you get your fire going. Your blower works. Then you go find your coal. Which in this case, I'm out of coal right now. So I'm going to run some of this charcoal. So you put a little bit of it on. And you get it going. I've got a little bit of coal right here in front of me, but I am about out. The coal will last a lot longer. It doesn't burn as hot as the charcoal, I don't think. I mean, it gets pretty hot, but uh, it lasts a lot longer. It has less sparks. So, on and you can take some of this coal put it on top Try and pause it, but
I'm not sure how much uh, how much uh, room the I'm filming on my phone how much room the phone has on it but uh, right now all I'm doing is drawing this out I probably only film one of these I'm actually gonna throw a bunch of this uh, I don't know if you can see the fire throw a bunch of this old coal up on top won't hurt anything and it's going to give me uh, a little bit more longevity to this fire. The charcoal doesn't last long. I don't even know if you can see the fire in the video. Alright, so... All I'm doing is drawing it out. It's taking longer than I want it to, but I'm out of practice. Alright, so I skipped ahead, roughed out the tang, got it forged out, got the blade tapered. Uh, I need to set it up for the point. And uh, this is supposed to be kind of a clip point like a uh, K-bar knife. Uh, it's going to have a little bit longer blade and probably a little fatter blade. But uh, I probably need to clip some of the end off because I think it's going to be too long. while you drop one. As long as you don't flip it up in your face, you're doing good. But anyway, there's the, uh, the tang and the blade portion. And just about got the, the blade tapered right. I think I'm going to cut it off about two inches from the end. Let me get my hardy tool. When I was building that grinder, I found my good hardy tool that I made. This is made out of some 4140 axle steel. And I've been missing it for a long time. And I had to go to my backup, which is an older one that's just mild steel. And it's junk. Uh, this one here is really good. That and I've been going to a cutoff wheel on a grinder. We're going to cut about two inches off. You'll see it start to come through. And just take another pair of uh, another pair of tongs and break that piece loose. Set that somewhere where you won't step on it. Actually, I may clip this back, clip this corner back a little bit so it's easier to forge. Keep that up again.
Doesn't have to be super hot. Now I'm getting my preform on my, uh, always take the hardy tool out. It's a little rusty, so it's sticking. Before you uh, start hammering, or you're, you're liable to clip your fingers off. Because when you come down with a hammer and that hardy tool's in there, you'll have the weight of that hammer in your hand. I think I'm gonna draw this out a little bit more. It's a little thick. Anvil hasn't been polished up in a while. You know, you get to working on them, it gets clean. I'll pause it and come back here in a second. All right, so I know anvil's different. I switched anvils. This is my hay button anvil. It's my first anvil, and it's a better anvil. I've been just using the other one because uh, it's more abused. And uh, but I like this one because I got a chain wrapped around it, and it's a lot quieter. Uh, it's got a good rebound. It's a good anvil. It's my favorite anvil. And I just realized while I was doing this that I don't use it like I used to. And I probably ought to, I really enjoy using it, so I'm probably get out to it. So uh, we've started our uh, Ricasso here. We got our tang tapered out. I'm going to switch around to the blade and curve it forward. Working on our, uh, on our blade shape. I probably have to go get some more coal today or tomorrow. Probably today. So I don't know how many minutes I'm in. But when I finish this blade, I'll go ahead and uh, cut the video and upload it. I'm not going to edit this video, so it's just whatever cuts are in it from the pausing the video. But I think I'm going to take a ride and see if I can come up with some better fuel. So what you do when you're wanting to go for a clip point is, this is the bottom of the blade, right here. This is the bottom of the blade. You curve that down so that you take the you counter curve it so that when you forge it out, you'll take some of that out. And uh, I'll do that here in a second. I'm gonna do one more straightening thing on the blade, and then we'll curve it out and uh, show you how that goes. Almost got that to burn. All right. 
So now we're gonna try carving it forward. All right, so I know that looks a little bit crazy, but time you start. By the time you start straightening that, that curve out, that curve, you'll have a straighter blade. I'll show you. Time you start forging out the edge. See, all these anvils just need a little bit of work on them so they get polished up. That rust comes right off when you start forging it. Alright, so now we're kind of coming here. Start forging that straight again. When we forge that point, because I slope the point down, it'll curve back up to a certain extent. They don't go crazy, but they'll do it. got to work your way back and forth it's probably not going to be exactly perfect and that's what grinders are for and also I'm out of practice it's been six months since I forged something See, but we're getting somewhere with our curve here. And that's what we're wanting. By the time we get it ground out, it'll look a lot better. I do like the forge about 90% to shape. That last little 10% is on the... Uh, Can't forget, I've got to stamp my H in them, maker's mark, when I get to that point. We're almost there. Do a few more and then I'll probably grind them before I heat treat them. That way I can, uh, well, I don't know. I'll probably go ahead and heat treat this one.
I kind of like it. Getting kind of interesting. I think I'm going to do one more pass on it, stamp an H in it, quench it, get our quench tank right. Yeah. They, this steel's kind of medium steel, so it doesn't quench super hard. So the best thing you can do is quench it as hard as you can and then just take a tad bit out of the heat treat. Not too much. All right, I got the blade pretty straight. Now I got to get the tang straight. Well, actually, I actually need to go ahead and stamp it, and then make sure it's straight one more time. Let's go ahead and stamp it. I always stamp on the uh, when you're holding the knife on your left hand side of the blade. That way, when you're holding in your right hand, you can look at it. That's pretty straight. Now we'll work that tang straight. All right, tang's pretty straight. Now we're gonna quench that blade. And uh, it's okay if the edge is the mostly the hardest part. That's fine. 
main thing is make sure the uh, blade is straight before it goes into the quench. And check it off. Came out pretty straight. There's a little bit of a warp in the blade, but not much. The back's pretty straight. That warp will grind out on that. The tang is pretty uh, warm right now. So what we'll do is we'll take it Tuck it up under something. We'll let that sit for a while and that's it.